Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. So today I'm going to be mixing and producing a shoegaze rock style song. Last week I recorded the shoegaze rock style song. And um, yeah, some of you guys had the idea that maybe in this live stream, in the next live stream, which is today, I can show how I mix it. So uh, headphones are suggested. If not, then don't even trip. Uh, if you just want to hang out and you're not interested in learning or seeing how I mix this, that's totally fine. All are welcome. I do not discriminate. And now let me go ahead and crop myself. We're going to get started. This is going to be with Ableton. I use Ableton only. So any other, any other DAW system uh, I'm not really familiar with. But I mean, I'm pretty sure you can still use the same, the same sort of effects like compression and saturation and any third-party plugins, wave third-party plugins. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it doesn't have to be Ableton. I'm just gonna show you how I kind of EQ things and how I use, how I use some of these effects. So hang in there one second. I'm gonna crop myself, and then we're gonna get into the session. Or do I even need to be in here? I don't even know anymore. Actually, let me crop the main. Via main view. So you don't like, I don't need you to see, you know, my browser's open or what I've been looking at. Just kidding, it's nothing crazy. All right. I hope everyone's doing well. There we go. So this is the session that I did last live stream last Thursday. And I'm going to start by uh, going with the drums. Now I got to let me reset all the volumes on each track just so we can get a fresh start. Now I did previously record the drums before I recorded the other instruments last live stream, just a heads up because, um, well, I would have done it live, but this broadcaster only allows two inputs and I wanted to use a four mic setup on the drum kit. So I just did that before. And then, uh, so the drums were already there last live stream. I did a little bit of uh, treatment, but nothing crazy. Gonna set everything to zero. The studio here is nice and quiet. When I got in here, there was a couple of bands practicing. A couple of ska bands. But it wasn't too, you know, wasn't too crazy. Knock on wood. Come in. That nobody starts rehearsing next door. Because the guys next door, they go, they go pretty ham sandwich. Ham sandwich in a basket. Whatever that means. Okay, so here are the drums. I have the mic, uh, the kick mic'd up. I've got the snare mic'd up. I've got a floor tom, which I used a couple times, as you can see here and there. Actually, no, I used it, you know, during the verses. And then I've got an overhead. Now, for an overhead, well, the kick mic, I used a D6, Audix D6. For the snare, I used a, a Shure 58. The floor tom, I believe it was like a 12, an Audix 12 or A12 or something like that. And for the overhead, I used, it's pretty much like a vocal mic. It's like a condenser maybe. It's the, it's a Shure KSM 27. So if you're familiar with that, that's what I used. I kind of like using that better for the overhead. I feel like it, it picks up more. It's, it's a lot more hotter. A little bit more lower frequencies so let's check out the drums let me shut everything else off we'll focus on the drums first this is how I um, do my mixing and oh yeah disclaimer disclaimer this is not the right way nor is it the only way but this is the way that I do it okay so I know some people are gonna have suggestions and opinions and that's totally fine 
this video is just showing you guys my approach on how I mix. That is all. I am just having fun. I am not a professional. But if you can take anything from here uh, positive, then that's great. I had done something right. Let's start with uh, just the drums in general. I'm going to show you guys what I did. This is the kick. I got some compression here. I did some EQing. I like to boost up right here in these subs. Now I can actually kind of cut because the subs, I want the bass to be there. I want the bass to sit there. And uh, so for the, for the snare, instead of miking it on top, I mic'd on the bottom. I feel like it's I get a little bit more punchier sound. It's I like the kind of dirtiness, you know, it's not it's not so clean. I feel like there's less things I have to do uh, to that snare. So that's that. And if it's a little too bright, you can always uh, dip down right here and cut that frequency. You know, if it sounds a little bit too hissy. I like to boost around here. Now for the floor tom, what did I do here? Did I do something already? Ah, yes. Now we can cut these low frequencies right here so it doesn't get too muddy with the bass and if there's low end on the guitar, which I like my guitars to have some low end. I don't, I don't like them to sound, at least for this style, I don't like them to sound, um, you know, too weak. I really like that low end. And then, so for the overhead. Excuse me, okay, so that's the overhead. And then what I like to do is, I like to group these. Whoops. I like to group these and I'll do some compression. I'll kind of boost it just a little bit. So it's a little bit more clear right here around this this uh, this frequency range. And then I I like to put a JS uh, excuse me, J thirty seven stereo tape simulator. Now I was having trouble earlier, which is why I was kinda late with this live stream. Because I had to like update my licenses for all the waves. So like when I launched Ableton, I got this message saying like, uh, your licenses aren't here or rescan licenses. You can't use the plugins. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that took me a while to figure out. I was like, fuck, should I just cancel this live stream? I'm like, no, like if I end up doing it, I just won't use any of these third party plugins. But I figured it out. So. Thank God. So I like to use the JS, uh, the J37, excuse me, I keep saying JS. The J37 Stereo Tape Simulator to give it some nice warmth and a little bit of texture with some saturation. And I use this plugin. Let me just show you one more time. It's the Mastering Fat Tight and Open Stereo. And I make a little bit of adjustments here. Okay, that's way too much saturation. It sounds kind of cool though, you know. Depending on the style. Alright, one second. I hope the stream is good. I can't really tell if uh, how far behind the stream is, but alright, so yeah, those are the drums. So that's a little too much saturation because I put like this mastering uh, this mastering chain at the very end in the master channel. And that adds a little bit more warmth and uh, loudness to it, if you will. The cool thing about this plugin is you can like, you can add noise. Can you hear that? If you're using headphones, you can add noise, like tape noise. But we don't need to do that. Plus five. Now, from what I understand right here, 88, 811, and 815, 
these are the models of the tape uh, the tape machine so the 88 is the older one I believe and then it goes to like the 60s like in the 60s the, and then I believe 815 is a more, more recent one you can kind of hear a little bit of difference when you switch to these it sounds a little bit more clear Kind of like that. All right, let's stick with that. So the drums, as I mentioned before, they're already sort of pre. Uh, what's the word? What is the word I'm looking for? I can't think of a word right now. Oh, they're already treated. All right, here's the bass. Now, because I use the fuzz pedal on the bass, we can't get rid of that, uh, you know, that grittiness. I should have used less, but I'm just going to, you know, work with what I have here. So that's the bass. I used a fuzz and it's, I, I played it out of my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, which is a guitar amp. I played the bass out of a guitar amp. Yes. It's not that crazy if you think about it, because if you're aware of like, or familiar with you know older older acts like back in the 60s and I mean Jimi Hendrix's bass player Noel Redding played out of a guitar amp and it sounds great you get this nice woody sound also if you use like flat wounds on your bass I, I really like that sound but that's not the reason why I use the guitar amp it's just because live stream you know purposes and I'm limited so I just kept I just kept that amp and then I just switched the uh, the instrument cable to the bass and other guitars because I didn't want to keep like unplugging shit. You know what I mean? I only got two inputs, so that's why I used the uh, guitar amp. All right, first things first, I like to go to audio effects and I put a compressor on. Now attack is how fast you want the compressor to um, to work. You know what I mean. So if you know you go later on the attack, it's gonna be it's kind of gonna kind of roll in that compression. Of course, if you have it right here, like at 0 0.01 milliseconds, I believe that's what MS is. Um, obviously, it's gonna you know react faster. And same with the release. So I like to keep it around right there. And then EQ. EQ is very important. This determines like your your um well your overall mix, you know what I mean? Because each instrument has its own frequency and they need to live right here. Each of these instruments needs a place to, you know kind of kind of live you know so you don't want to put like the kick and the bass in the same area i mean if you do then you're going to want like a side chain or like a multi-band eq like the ones that move so every time the kick you know hits the bass can duck which that's what a, a side chain does so this is where our kick is right here and i'm going to show you really quick if you look, let's just do the kick and the bass. Right here. And here's our bass. This is what I like to do. Now the reason why I boost around 1K, or like around here, is because I want I want the listener to be able to hear the bass like because like most people listen to music like just straight from their phone if they're scrolling or something not everybody uses headphones and even 
the speakers on your laptop. The speakers aren't that great, you know, so if you can find a way to mix your bass to where those frequencies, you, you can still hear that bass, which is a good reason why I like to use um, grittiness with the bass because you can hear it more. Like if you listen to even like hip hop, you know, like our trap music, you can hear the bass just with your phone. You can hear the bass notes. You can't feel it. I mean, if you put earphones in, you're going to be able to feel that 808, but that's, I don't know if you noticed, like some 808s are really gritty and that's so you can hear the 808s uh, just straight through your phone or through your laptop without any headphones. So sometimes I like to consider that, you know what I mean? And especially depending on what style of music I'm uh, producing or writing, if it doesn't, if the song doesn't call for grittiness, I would still boost around 1K so you can still hear the notes of that bass even though you can't feel it. Wherever sounds good. Then I'm going to use a little bit of saturation. I'm going to go to Sonoid Fold. Bass is going to add more bass. If you go the opposite way, it's going to, you know, it's going to sound like that. And that might sound cool too if you want that sound but you also want low end I also usually will duplicate the bass track one for low frequencies and the other one I can add the saturator for um, for more uh, higher frequencies or mid frequencies more gritty but we're not going to do that I will uh, pull back a little bit on the output because we're not going for volume we're just going for a little bit of uh, warmth and texture so one way to see that is to switch on and off the saturator. If the if it if the uh, track is loud with the saturator and you turn it off and the, the bass goes low, then you might want to pull back a little bit on the uh, output. But that sounds about even. You can add a little bit more drive if you'd like. Now what I like to do is go to where are we at? Dynamics, glue compression. And this is that sidechain I was talking about, if you're not familiar with it. Sidechain input, I'll go to kick. So that way every time the kick hits, the bass will duck. And uh, you'll be able to hear the bass, the kick drum. Excuse me. And it won't get too muddy. You can also do this to, with the kick too. If you want that kick to kind of stand out a little bit. But yeah, here we are. Okay, so threshold. I'm just exaggerating, but I, I just want to show you what I'm talking about. If you can hear the bass. Can you hear that? But that's way too much. We don't want we don't want to lose the bass that much. Just a little bit. And you can control to the attack as well. And the release. start lowering some of these we can even start panning too as far as the, uh, the drums oh there we go i already did that lower the snare you can lower the overhead for now another important thing is also depends on the headphones that you use like for example um, I used to use, I didn't have these headphones, these are Audio, Audio Technica M50Xs. I love these headphones. They're, they're, they're pretty uh, like flat and I, I got used to them when mixing. But I used to use just the regular um, Apple uh, EarPods, not AirPods, EarPods. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I was mixing with that like the first, I don't know, the first like 50 videos that I put out, I was just mixing with that. And um, they're not bad, but you need to kind of know uh, your headphones. Like some headphones give a little bit more bass. Some are a little bit more flat. Some give a little bit more treble. So that's kind of dangerous when you're mixing. As long as you're familiar, like, for example, if you have earphones that don't give that much bass, 
and you boost you know the bass up and everything and then you hear it on a different uh, uh, different like system or different headphones the bass is probably going to be super loud and you're going to be like wait what the hell like like e all the headphones are different so um if you guys know any really good headphones that are not too expensive you know that work for you that that's great you know what i mean i i don't know i'm not aware of like everything that is out there right now these are just i happen to just kind of i and you can't do research you kind of you're just gonna have to spend the money and try them out and if it works great you just made an investment if it doesn't then you know maybe sell them and find something else you know because you can go to like reviews and on youtube and stuff but i mean honestly the best thing to do is just try them out yourself or if you know somebody who has s some gear that you want to try you don't want to spend the money right away that helps too but i understand like musicians you know we don't we don't have that much money to say the least all right now rhythm guitar so that's a bass and drums Now keep in mind that isn't the final bass and drums. As we start mixing everything else and things start kind of working together, we're gonna make some adjustments. That's just, that's natural, that's gonna happen. So uh, don't judge right away. All right, I already threw an EQ on here. I don't remember doing that. Maybe I did that last live, live stream. But let's add some compression. This. Before we do that clean guitar, what else do we have over here? I don't know what this is. Is this our lead? All right, let's work on our lead. Now what I like to do just to get a little head start, I'll just copy paste this chain right here. And let me label this lead guitar. Okay. Now remember, as I mentioned, where where the fr uh, instruments sit. I was gonna say frequencies. Instruments sit. So we have our rhythm right here, where I boosted around what is that like seven k. Then our lead is right here in the middle at one k. Bass I boosted right here. You don't have to boost frequencies if you don't need to, by the way. I just, this is, this is just how I kind of do it. Sometimes I like things to just pop out. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb. little trick to test the tail of your of your uh, reverb is just to play it and pause it so that's a little too much oh also what I like to do is like I'm gonna duplicate the lead guitar right 
I'm gonna label the second one verb lead guitar and then for the second one I could put more reverb and pan it to the opposite side so for example let me show you so let's just say that's our main pan it all the way to the right you can take off a little bit of reverb now our other one you pan it the opposite side we could add more reverb and just keep it lower I don't know if you can hear that. If you're wearing headphones, you'll be able to hear that. If it's too much, we can either cut back on the dry and wetness, I mean the wetness, or we can uh, just lower it. You can also cut that back. Now we can lower the uh, the lead just a little bit. Also, we can automate too. Now I'm gonna go to the comments in a bit. Just a uh, one second. I don't, I don't mean to leave you guys hanging. I see, like, comments, but I don't know what it says yet right now. But I'll, I'll go to them. Don't worry. I'm not ignoring you guys. I just, I'm trying not to bore anybody. All right. I'm going to save that. Now we can work on the clean guitar, which clean means clean. I don't think I have any, I don't remember doing any um, distortion or anything like that. Yep. Sounds like an Eminem song from, I think it's... Uh, his LP? No. Is it the Sl Slim Shady LP? Maybe. Maybe it's the Mar- No, it's the Marshall Mathers LP. They probably use the same chord. I don't know. I swear I didn't rip that off from there. It is an E minor sus 2. Alright, so we can do a... Uh, I'm just gonna co copy paste this. Because I'm gonna use the same... And this is the only place where there's clean guitar. You can do some reverb. And I think I'm gonna add some chorus. Actually, let me shut that off. Let's look for some chorus. heard that little choke right when I played that lead I mean that those notes yeah I can hear it if I can hear it you guys can hear it spooky. we just pretend that never happened it's really hard playing those chords like my fingers got fatter and also, I haven't been practicing guitar, so that's that's what happens. That is the uh, byproduct. All right, now we can pan the uh, clean guitar.
trying to think right now. What else? What else this, uh, what it needs? I'm trying to serve the song. What else does it need? Thank you. putting Maserati on this bass. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I don't want to add more. No, maybe I shouldn't. Let's just keep it as is for now. I'm going to work on the vocals and then I'll figure it out. I'll figure out what else it needs. So these are the main vocals right here. I'm going to shut the other vocals off just for now. And then we'll work um, off these. Actually, what we can do since it's grouped. Turned into dust and floated on. sound float it off what made the change I couldn't guess enough something has to give a little bit of reverb should smooth it out a little bit float it off what made the change I couldn't guess enough Something has to give Float it off So let's hear it with and without our what adjustments made the change I couldn't guess enough Sounds a little muddy and a little bit of, you know Something has to line. give but then we, with our adjustments and a little bit of reverb, I feel like it kind of smooths it out a little bit. It Help helps. me to forgive. And we can also boost a little bit if we need to. to dust. Now, if we're looking for that, like a more gritty sound, which I don't think we should, but I just kind of want to show you guys what I do sometimes. Because we already have enough grittiness with the bass. We have fuzz, and then we have amp distortion. Um, I think I, I kind of, I want to balance it out with some just clean vocals, but also sometimes, I don't know, it sounds cool like this. Oh, that's too much. We can dial back on the drive. It off. What made the change? I couldn't guess enough. So with and without. It off. You can tell, right? If you're... You got what headphones. Made the 
Almost megaphone-ish. Because it's not a pop song, we can have the uh, vocals not so like not so present. It's not the same as all About right there, I think it's fine. reverb on these they'll kind of get lost I think they're fine where they're at all right let me go to the comments really quick and say what's up tomorrow's ghost what's up that's you Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Tomorrow's ghost. Jean-Pierre, what's up? Kaya, you're the greatest. Johnny Ghoul. Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't, I didn't give you a chance. Wow, I'm usually too late for these live streams. Same. Plain view. What's up, dude? I think it was your idea for me to uh, mix, or maybe it was a couple of your guys' idea. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, uh, someone asked if I would be down to, like, review their, um, or not review, but, like, listen on a live stream to their music and then kind of just give advice or just um what i think or whatever i would be down if anyone else is down you can shoot your music and we can all listen to it and just talk about it no judging at all
Yeah, I think I think the basement, I think that one was the one that they used to use, right? Like in the 60s? I could be wrong. I think, I'm not too sure. Wait, where am I at? What's up, dude? Do you gain stage when you initially record? And if so, any particular decibel? I just try not to clip, honestly. Like, there's no... I mean, you can see, like, some of these... Some of these, um... These waves right here aren't... They're not, like, tiny. Maybe they should have been a little bit bigger, you know what I mean? A little bit healthier. They look a little malnourished. But no, not necessarily. I honestly, yeah, I do. I adjust things... I adjust things. Sorry about that. This is what I meant to do. Yeah, I just adjust things as I go along. Um, but I don't stage gain. Or yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I think, is that from the song I Marshall Mathers? That's it, right? Yeah, that takes me back. All right, let me go back to the session. Uh, whoever's here, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let me go back here. I'm going to start lowering instruments just little by little here. Because, like, the instruments sound good on their own, but it's when you start introducing other instruments and, then you know, they, they kind of start fighting. I gotta give everyone a chance.
Now I usually will give myself like a day or two to just kind of give my ears a rest from at least listening to this. And then I will still continue to make, you know, micro adjustments. Uh, but for now, this is where I would leave it. Because then after a while, you know, after you give your ears a rest and you come back to it, something is going to sound a little too loud or too low, and that's when you just start making little adjustments. Pro tip from a non-pro. But yeah, that's that's what I would. This is how I would mix this song. Let me know what you guys think. As far as like you know, your approach, how you would do it, or even how it sounds. Does anything sound to you too out of place? I know there's gonna be a little bit of a difference because if everyone's using different headphones to listen to or. Listening to it, listening to it on the TV or a laptop or something, it's gonna be different. But I mean, if anything stands out too much, you know, you can let me know. I won't cry, I promise. All right, but yeah, but that's pretty much it. That's what I would do. I hope this kind of uh, helped or satisfied anybody who wanted to know how I mix. I got a few questions and comments about that, so um, yeah. Tomorrow's ghost. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And you know, just I'm still learning this stuff. You know, I don't. I've only been using Ableton for several years now. I think. So yeah, I'm still finding different ways and some people have suggestions and stuff and they do help. Uh but it I'm pretty hard-headed, you know, like I it takes me um takes me a while to, you know, kind of uh do things the easy way instead of the hard way. I don't know if any of you guys are like that, but yeah, quick transition. Boom. All right, Corvo, you made it, dude. You made it. Ouch, I just headbutted my mic. Thank you. Hi, Saul, I appreciate you. Uh, What was I going to say? I was going to say something. I forgot what I was going to say. Perfunctory. What's up? Thanks, Corvo. I appreciate it, man. Little by little, little by little, you know, I'm going to make these adjustments and um, it'll, it'll come together. Riverhouse, thank you. Um, I did use Logic for like uh, maybe like a month. I was taking a community college classes like four years ago I think and uh, that's the only DAW that they had so we had to use that and uh, it took me a while I think by the time I started getting used to it um, is when I just stopped going but uh, it's it's I mean it, it looks completely not completely there's there's a big difference between the uh, the layout and um, how everything yeah how everything is laid out basically I'm just used to Ableton, so that's that's what I go with, honestly. That's what I learned. My first DAW was Ableton. And I heard, like, a lot of people say, oh, it's for, like, um, DJs, and it's more for just production and stuff, and not really so much recording. I mean, some people use multiple DAWs. Uh, if you're a mixing engineer, maybe you just use Logic, or if you're, um, if you're just a producer dj producer maybe you just use ableton i don't know i'm i think i'm a little bit of both or maybe none of those well i'm not a dj i'm not against djs my uncle was a dj
But this was when like he, you know, people mixed vinyl records, like real real vinyl records, not, you know. Which I'm not hating on the new DJs or anything like that. I don't I just I never got into it. All right, where are we at? Let me clear this. So yeah, uh, this coming Thursday, I think it's the 9th. Yeah, the 9th. Maybe I wanted to do yesterday I was messing around with this this song and I want to kind of like record it and do what I did with this like um record like a live uh I guess like it's it's definitely granddaddy influenced. Somebody asked me about doing a granddaddy style song and um that kind of like popped in my head so I just kind of wrote something and it started sounding like granddaddy. I'm like, "Okay, well maybe I can do a live stream of recording a granddaddy style song if you guys are down." And also maybe towards the end of the live stream I can like listen to you as if you guys shoot me your stuff I can listen to it we can all listen to it and um yeah just kind of check it out it's up to you guys I'm down for whatever but for sure I want to do a live stream though um for sure I want to do a live stream Thursday the 9th at 5 30 p.m if you guys are down swing by i will be here 5 30 p.m pacific standard time but yeah as far as today's live stream i think that's about gonna do it like i said i'll, I'll give my ears a rest and uh um yeah i'll come back to it but i, I don't think i'm gonna do live stream on that coming back to it because I think you're just going to get tired of it but for sure a new live stream Thursday and I don't know if I should release this maybe I could do like a video on this or something like a regular video I don't know when I'm going to release another regular video but the last one I released I don't know if you saw it I think the thumbnail was pretty bad I don't know or maybe the video wasn't good but it didn't not very many people saw or maybe I'm being shadow banned well, it's not being shadow banned. It's just I'm unpopular, I think is what it is. But I did a... Or maybe it's the band. Not a lot of people know about. Portugal the Man. If you guys heard of Portugal the Man. I did a... a writing a song influenced by Portugal the Man. I released it Friday. Yeah, Friday. A few days ago. So check it out. I'm not sure when I'm going to release another one of those videos. Because I have some stuff I'm working on. Outside of music. So, um, but for sure, live streams, like, I think are my best bet for now, at least for the next month and a half until I finish the project that I'm doing outside of this. But yeah, if you guys are down, live stream, any suggestions or anything about the channel or anything, you can just shoot them in the comments. If you guys are interested in me uh, listening to your guys' track where we can all, uh, like, listen to them and just kind of you know give our thoughts shoot me an email uh, you can probably put the subject as live stream listen I guess and you can send that to miss no what is it music by Will Gonzalez music by W-I-L-L G-O-N-Z A-L-E-Z that's two Z's for you because one wasn't enough but yeah, I think that's going to about do it today. Uh, without, I don't want to waste any more of you guys' time. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll make a post on the next video, the next live stream. So until then, uh, yeah, do the damn thing to the damn thing. Shoot me, yeah, shoot me an email, comment, whatever you want to do. Do it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.